we are living in a dispensational shift do you not know it are you living under a rock where you can't tell that the dispensations are changing from one to another we're at the end part of it and we're shifting into the next the Holy Ghost is God the in the earth today and you walk with Jesus him by saying right words here. my name is Andrew Hemstraw thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe if this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 when a man's ways please the Lord say please the Lord please the Lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him is this true yeah it must be true to scripture so what are the enemies of man like I don't like this message war is an enemy of man mm -hmm. drought just gonna name a few things here poverty is poverty an enemy yeah poverty will kill you how about sickness is that an enemy of man disease yeah how about old age sure mm -hmm. the ultimate enemy of man is death that would be the end result wouldn't it be in fact the last enemy to be put underfoot is death first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26 says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death for he hath put all things under his feet so what's the last enemy death he says it's an enemy but he says it's the last one that will be put under so what would that mean there must be other ones prior to that mm -hmm. that you're gonna have to put under your feet mm -hmm. it would be all those other things that we talked about already yeah it says the last enemy to be put underfoot is death is that true it says it is. Yeah. so both of those things are true they both, both are, true. are true but when you put them together it makes even a greater truth can you hear that mm -hmm. Enoch pleased God and was not for God translated him mm -hmm. right he just went on without dying here we see what pleases God Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says but without faith it's impossible to please him right mm -hmm. so if it's impossible to please him without faith then it must be faith that pleases him is that too difficult to understand no. well when your ways please him he makes his enemies mm -hmm. at peace are you here mm -hmm. go back in time one verse by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death did he please god yeah. was the enemy named death made to be at peace with Enoch yes couldn't touch him by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God so Enoch pleased God by what he said and death was put under his feet well I'm not unfamiliar with angelic visitations say angelic, angelic. Visitations. visitations I've had many over the course of my life I'm not done yet and most of these visitations had to do with the ministry or the message that I'm involved with and preaching even tonight the first one that I can remember was when I was a young boy and I almost drowned but I was saved by an angel I can close my eyes right now 
and still see that same angel just like I was there and that was a long time ago and some angels even brought people to me to help me in the ministry and with this message angels may have brought you listen angels may have brought you to this message to hear the things that I'm saying that they may stir up those things in your inner man that you may go someplace that you could not go without it are you with me someone has to fulfill all things Acts chapter 7 verse 51 you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did so do you who were they resisting the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. verse 52 which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it disposition can also mean instrumentality the operation so the the angels had to be involved in bringing the law into the earth mm -hmm. well every dispensation has angelic involvement and anytime there's a dispensational shift there's angelic involvement mm -hmm. well this last one is no different why would it be God did it this way all before but now in this last time it's not no this last one is no different we are living in a dispensational shift can you hear that do you not know it are you living under a rock where you can't tell that the dispensations are changing from one to another we're at the last the end part of it and we're shifting into the next things must shift and I am part of that shift get used to it well we don't like that we don't like you well and you like you don't like being shifted this message when you embrace it it seems like a new dispensation when you begin worshiping the Holy Ghost it seems as if a brand new dispensation has happened why because that's the shift use the words I worship you Holy Ghost those words were given to me by an angel using the specific words that an angel gave to me seems like a brand new dispensation he said use the words I worship you Holy Ghost and I did it I began using those words in my own personal life and I began to preach those words and I preached them and I used them and I preached them and I used them and I began to make Holy Ghost worshipers out of people something that never existed before and they're able to listen they are able to go to a place shift into a place that they couldn't go before this takes us to the Enochian end are you here what is the Enochian end we just read that mm -hmm. Enoch pleased God and was not for God took him he did not see death that last enemy was put under his feet that's the Enochian end this faith worshiping the Holy Ghost as God and walking with him on the earth by saying words is a faith is a belief that pleases God and has an Enochian end Enoch had faith we read that right his faith pleased God let's see what Jesus said about great faith you all right with that yeah. is this okay so far yes. death is not your friend death is a biblical enemy that is to be the last one put under our feet but it is to be put under our feet does your faith take you there 
your faith your belief your religious your religion should be taking you there matthew chapter 8 verse 5 and when jesus was entered into capernaum there came unto him a centurion beseeching him verse 6 and saying lord my servant lies at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented verse 7 and jesus saith unto him i will come and heal him verse 8 the centurion answered and said lord i am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed what did he say speak the word only verse 10 when jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily i say unto you i have not found so great faith no not in israel what did jesus call so great faith that he didn't find in anyone else someone who said speak the word only speak the word only is where the greatest faith exists did you hear that mm -hmm. speaking the word only is where the greatest faith exists so speaking the word would have something to do with putting the last enemy under your foot jesus said no greater faith and do you suppose this kind of faith pleased jesus he marveled he was marvelously pleased mm -hmm. the greatest faith speaks the word only and we know this is how we walk with god the holy ghost in the earth is by speaking in agreement with his word are you here <laughs> there is nothing that speaking the word only cannot do and cannot subdue death included there's nothing speaking the word of god only cannot do isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth what would you call that a spoken word it has to be spoken mm -hmm. say it has to be, has to be spoken. spoken so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish what shall accomplish the spoken word shall accomplish it shall accomplish that which i please does that please god yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and it the spoken word shall prosper in the thing whereunto i sent it so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth it shall prosper what's going to prosper the word spoken will prosper did you hear it the word spoken will prosper the word spoken will prosper the question is will you be there when it does or are you going to be someplace else i guarantee that you will be there if you're the one speaking it are you here mm -hmm. because it shall prosper the man that pleases the lord what does god do he makes his enemies to be at peace with him was that a scripture will you be there when it prospers it shall why because it's God's Word in your mouth there's nothing that speaking God's Word won't do because it's his word in your mouth it's his righteousness what is the spoken Word of God is his righteousness the righteousness of God the Bible calls it the righteousness of faith this is the righteousness of faith mm -hmm. the word spoken it's his righteousness it's his ability we just read that in isaiah 55 11. 
so shall my word be it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it God's Word in your mouth it's his angelic command Psalms chapter 103 verse 20 bless the Lord you his angels that excel in strength that do his commands hearkening unto the voice of his word what is the voice of his word the spoken word they're hearkening they're listening to the voicing of God's word God's word in your mouth is his angelic command Proverbs 18 verse 21 says death and life are in the power of the tongue is this in your Bible yes. is this true so what would put death under your feet it would have to be something in your mouth mm -hmm. called the tongue mm -hmm. Enoch pleased God he had a testimony with his tongue that he pleased God and God translated him yeah. death was put under his feet so death and life are in the power of the tongue death's power is where all of these things live in degrees one degree or another you can have more death you can have more life can you have more life yes. Jesus said that I am come I have come that they might have life and they might have it more okay you still here so you can have more death in your mouth with your tongue or you can have more life mm -hmm. all these things live in degrees righteousness in degrees mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4 verse 8 Jesus said it is written thou shalt worship the Lord your God and him only shalt thou serve only is a, a mark of degrees because if you weren't worshiping him only you were worshiping him less than only does that make sense mm -hmm. and if you weren't serving him only you were serving him at a lesser degree yeah. but thou shalt worship the Lord your God who's the Lord your God near today the Holy, the Holy Ghost thou shalt worship the Lord your God Holy Ghost and him only mm -hmm. people get mad at me over this but so get mad at me I'm not mad at me uh -uh. thou shalt worship the Lord your God who happens to be the Holy Ghost and him only shalt thou serve serving him is speaking in agreement with his word only what's worshiping him well that's worshiping him I worship you Holy Ghost and I speak in agreement with your word only does worshiping him please him yeah I know God's big on that he likes your worship mm -hmm. is the Holy Ghost God yes. you should worship God yeah. does speaking in agreement with his word please him yes. yes I hope we got you there anyway mm -hmm. right so speaking his word only would be a greater degree of pleasing him yeah. speaking his word only pleases him more than to not yeah. <laughs> and true righteousness would be only mm -hmm. only speaking his word can you see that mm -hmm. true righteousness pure righteousness would be only well there came a day not too long ago when the word only kept coming to my ear I'd read a verse of scripture and I'd hear this word only I'd read another verse of scripture I'd hear the word only in fact that verse of scripture that we just read thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve is only in the Bible yes yeah what was the greatest faith speak the word only 
and my servant shall be healed right so I had enough sense to know that this was an angel speaking to me I'm not a novice I didn't didn't just run off with it but I knew what was happening so I asked God I said what's with this angel he keeps saying only only every time I read something he kept saying only after it and I said God what's with this angel and God said he speaks the word only <laughs> so I started calling him the only angel because he speaks the word only but only is righteousness and only has become the essence of my religion I worship the Lord my God and him only do I serve only is right jam-packed in the middle of that statement isn't it mm -hmm. I shall worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve only applies to the worship mm -hmm. and only applies to the serving which we know is speaking in agreement with his word are you here mm -hmm. well this came to me by the instrumentality of angels what am I not to do it hear me now the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding but the fear of the Lord the Lord God Holy Ghost is the beginning and it has become the beginning of many things for me things that are brand new almost as if I'm stepping into a new dispensation the more I know now that I worship the Holy Ghost as God and walk with him by speaking in agreement with his word only mm -hmm. the more I know now the less I used to know before I became a Holy Ghost worshiper does this make sense mm -hmm. the more I know now the less I used to know and I knew a lot I thought mm -hmm. therefore the more I thought I knew the more wrong I was we are no longer in the dispensation of Jesus that's where most people want to be they contort their doctrine in order to stay there so that they can think they're still in the dispensation of Jesus but he left and sent another one to be with you we are in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today is the only part of the Godhead in the earth today but we're also at the very end of this dispensation where there's a dispensational shift and we have to step over say step over, step over. you think you're gonna be able to step over if you're still holding on to the past dispensation we are in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost walking with him by speaking in agreement with his word and we are literally at the very end of it where the last enemy to be put under our feet is death this is the Enochian end worshiping the Holy Ghost pleases God the Holy Ghost speaking in agreement with his word only pleases God the Holy Ghost who wrote the word and when a man's ways please the Lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him and we know that the last enemy to be put under our feet is death Holy Ghost I thank you that these words have entered into the hearts of people who have heard and they shall know a new way and a new day and as the shaking occurs not only in them but all around them fear not for the Holy Ghost is with you and he shall cause you to walk in a new way and in a new day and this new dispensation shall open to you and it shall be like you've been here before very new but very familiar we thank you Holy Ghost for it in Jesus name
amen if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me holy ghost, holy ghost i worship God. you i thank you that my finances are increasing dispensationally and i stand in the next dispensation wealthy and established in all the glory of god in jesus name amen